Hi there! So today mm, we are going to talk about vowels, uh, particularly about the classification of the English vowel sounds. Uh, definitely you might ask um, in what way this classification might help me to improve my pronunciation. Uh, in, in my opinion, it might, because um, it mm, indicates uh, the position of uh, the tongue in your mouth, uh, the degree of openness of the mouth, and this might be very helpful indeed. Um, first of all, what is a vowel? Uh, I will um, suggest to pronounce any vowel. This is quite um, a vowel I personally pronounce quite often, uh, pronounce any other. What you might notice um, is that while pronouncing the vowel, the airstream is not obstructed while passing through your mouth. So, the airstream does not meet any block to prevent it from passing or flowing out um, through the mouth, mouth. And this is a vowel. Uh, generally, the vowels are divided into monophthongs and diphthongs. What is the difference? As easy as pie. Um, Pronounce this sound, a in l. What about this one? A in ale. Defin definitely there is a difference. And the difference is in the so-called the quality of the sound. Um, what it basically means is that the articulation of this sound um, is relatively the same from the beginning till the end. E. Nothing changes, right? Whereas while pronouncing A, we notice that the articulation changes. It gradually um, glides from E towards E. And this is the diphthong. So whenever the quality of the sound changes, that is, the articulation changes, we have a diphthong. When it stays relatively the same, we have a monophthong. So, um, what we are going to focus next is on the position of the tongue and the openness of the mouth. Um, I don't know if you have ever consulted books in phonetics. If you have, you must have come across across this quadrilateral. Uh, trust me, it uh, is not meant to puzzle you. On the contrary, it is uh, intended to help you. Um, what you um, have to pay attention to uh, or remember is that the horizontal part um, indicates uh, the way your tongue is positioned in the um, mouth. Whereas the vertical part uh, is about uh, the degree of closeness of your jaws. Uh, speaking about the jaws, I think that this picture might help you. Uh, this night shark probably tells you, be on your guard, I'm coming. Um, so. Um, the vertical part, the jaws. Um, while pronouncing the sound, for example, e, eh, you might notice that your uh, lower jaw, the degree of closeness of your lower jaw um, to the upper is at its lowest. E, eh, ah, right? Low. Uh, whereas while pronouncing, for example, er, it's somewhere in, in between, it's in the middle. And while pronouncing, for example, the sound E, you might notice that the lower uh, uh, jaw is close to the upper jaw. So it implies that the degree of closeness is at its highest. And that's why we have 
uh, high, mid and low vowels. Uh, now we shall deal with the horizontal part. Um, try to pronounce again the sound E. What you uh, may might notice is the fact that the front part of your tongue is slightly raised towards the hard palate. And that's why we have this classification, front vowels. The same happens with E. You might notice that, again, the front part of the tongue is slightly raised towards the hard palate. When it comes to the central part, it means that the central part of the tongue is raised toward the hard palate. And finally, the back vowels. It means that the back part of the tongue is raised this time towards the soft palate because it's somewhere there, right? We have cord, we have uh, knot, we have book. Uh, okay. Um, also, um, I have um, put here some columns. What this column um, stands for is the length of the vowel. In English, we have long and short vowels. The length usually is indicated with a column. Also, you might notice some circles here. There are four circles, all in all. Um, this means that these vowels are the so-called rounded vowels. Um, just pronounce the vowel, for example, O. You might notice that uh, your lips are rounded, and this makes the vowel rounded too. In English, there are only four rounded vowels, and they all happen to be back vowels. Um, definitely, it is always better to practice um, in context um, and mm, be careful that mm, on the way you open your mouth depends the uh, word itself because seat, sit, set and sat mean different things and only um, uh, uh, the openness of the mouth counts um, here. Uh, he, uh, in the first two pair, we, pairs uh, we have uh, also the length of the vowel. There are other examples here. We have sun, we have art, we have fur, we have flu, we have book, we have cord, we have cot. Um, this is the so-called schwa sound in English and um, it always happened in a stressed position. That's why I chose mother. That's mother. Um, so, um, practice more. I hope it was useful. Uh, and next time I would like just to talk about the consonants. Um, and I'd like to finish um, today's meeting with a very short poem and I would recommend you to always look for short poems to uh, learn them because they really might help you to improve your pronunciation. The, po the poem I have chosen for today is by Nazim Hikmet, which is uh, The most beautiful sea hasn't been crossed yet. The most beautiful child hasn't grown up yet. The most beautiful days, we haven't seen them yet. The most beautiful word I wanted to tell you, I haven't said yet. Okay, thank you and see you. Bye.